What is the ultimate form of a robot? Would it be like Tesla's humanoid? It's just about my height. Or running boxes on wheels? Uh -huh. Or humble but powerful robotic arms? I think it's quite comfortable. I explored three leading robotic companies in Beijing to witness the technology that will shape the future of robotics. The first company I visit, Aobo, really knows how to treat their guests nicely. I'm going to order a latte with um, a shape of swan on the top. The machine says, I'm brewing your coffee right now. Voila, here comes the coffee. And here comes the milk and foam. The arm gives it a good shake. Watch how these two arms work in coordination, making sure the milk blends nicely into the coffee. And here is the magic. Exactly the shape of a swan. Mmm, even better than ST Bucks. Very impressive. Ready for some robot physiotherapy, or simply put, machine massage? Why not? Uh, it's got nice touch on my skin. The head is quite gentle. It's always warm. It's supposed to accelerate the blood flowing and it's supposed to relax my muscle. I think I quite like it. I had my portrait painted by a robot artist and played around a firing row against a smart robot. So what are these collaborative robots consist of? This is the control system. It's a small box. It used to be a huge box. Now it's totally reduced in size, saving a lot of room. This is the core chips, the control system. And these are the bearings. It controls the movements of the arms, the joints. Now all these bearings can be Chinese domestically sourced and these very important joints and each robotic arm can have six joints so they can move in every direction. So you mentioned robotic arms. So in many manufacturing settings, it really is about moving an object from one point to another or doing some work on it, whether that's you know carving it, polishing it, whatever, and there, the ideal form would be an arm versus a humanoid form factor with not only two arms, but also two legs and a head. Industrial robots, we get it. What about service robots that can help us in our daily lives? Aha. Meet D2, D for delivery. It reminds me of the cute R2 in Star Wars. Here is the grand adventure of D2 to my room. First, can I have two bottles of water? Thank you. I ring up the front desk. A staff will put in my room number and load my goodies into D2. Off D2 goes on its noble quest. It sends a secret signal to command the elevator. With its navigation system, D2 locates my room with no problem. And finally, it rings the phone in my room to let me know. Aha. Mission accomplished. And the force is with D2. D2 uh, is very useful for us because uh, we have a lot of requests from uh, guests on uh, Quidi, Why My Medicine, or they need extra toothbrush, slippers. So this is really help us to be very efficient. The guests are quite enjoying to interact with the robot as well. Not far from the hotel lies the home of D2, Segway Nightbot. Wow. I find that the company also makes electric carts and scooters. Yeah. Welcome to Segway Nightbot. Thank you. We are dedicated to leading the innovation of short transportation and robotics. You can see that uh, mm -hmm. Your company has lots of experience making two electric two-wheelers. Yeah. And now you keep updating Indoor robots. Indoor delivery robots. Somehow they're connected, right? I mean, the technology, the yes. idea, moving people and moving... Moving things. Wang Xinxian tells me that Segway Nightboard is heavily focusing on robotics as a next driver for growth. 
A recent study by Force and Sullivan projects that global service robot market will grow from 3 billion yuan in 2024 to 10 billion yuan in 2030, with an annual growth rate of 20%. Your company does not do the humanoid. Just some box-shaped robots would be enough to do the services? Uh, actually, the service uh, like this uh, uh, hotel robots or restaurant robots, it is very practical for our users. Very practical. Yeah, it doesn't cost very much for them. They can, they can uh, ah, afford it. Cost-effective. Yeah. yeah. Form follows function. Humanoid robots probably won't be the dominant form of robots, but certainly there will be a space for them. Um, but it will be alongside uh, robots with four legs, robots with wheels, maybe robots that are hovering in the air, um, that we'll see many, many different forms of uh, robots, just as we see many, many different forms of animals, right? Survival of the fittest, right? I think you can call it survival of the fittest, absolutely. My visit to the next company starts with playing mahjong against a robot. This machine scans the battlefield through the lens of a camera, calculates the odds with AI and places the tiles on the table with precision. Mahjong playing uh, basically uh, composed of uh, many basic uh, operations. For example, uh, fetch mahjong, recognize what it is, and then can choose uh, which one to put. Basically, we are giving the robot ability to see, to think, and to compose basic movements by itself. Mr. Xiao Tianlan says that robotics has big potential for improvement. His company, MechMind, is at the forefront of industry, specializing in robotic vision and AI. Sensor, vision, robot planning, and application, we do them all. There's a huge market for such eyes and brain for industrial robots. MechMind has deployed over 10,000 AI-powered cameras in over 50 economies, including Germany and Japan. What do you think is the ultimate direction of developing robots? It will be like in the, uh, in the movie WALL-E. Yeah, there's robots of every form. But I think many of them can share common brain and eyes. Because uh, no matter if the robot has a one arm, two arm, two leg, or no leg, its eye and brain, many things are in common. So I think that can be standardized somehow. Now it's time to put on the glasses of prophecy to envision the future. Oh,